it's your open source advocate and today we're going to talk about automations in home assistant what are automations they're exactly what they sound like basically help you automate the tasks that you do or that your home is doing in this case with home assistant automate things like when i leave my house turn all of the lights off when somebody returns home turn on the porch light if it's after this time or after sunset if it's before sunrise and I'm leaving the house turn off all the inside lights and turn on the outside lights maybe your air conditioning system should be turned off during the night or lowered or, or raised and these are all things you can do with separate applications but setting this stuff up in home assistant just makes it much easier to manage at some point and, and it becomes much easier for you to set these things up and do a, real, a lot of really cool things between all the devices that you have that can work with home assistant so today we're going to go through the basics of the automations in home assistant and let you kind of see how how that works and later we'll get into an automation framework called node red and this just gives you a bit more power and control but I think the first thing and the most important thing is to understand the basics of automations now we're going to do this through the user interface but we'll also look at the automations configuration file just so you can get a feel for what's actually happening in the background when you use the UI so stick with me and we'll get into it right after this I want to say thank you to all of my subscribers and all of my patrons over at Patreon. Seriously, you guys make this so worth it for me to do these videos every week. I really truly enjoy it and I just can't say thank you enough. If you're enjoying these videos, subscribe. Let YouTube know that I'm doing a good job by subscribing to the channel. Plus, you'll get notified when I have new videos coming out. And finally, if you're enjoying what I'm doing, give it a like. Just click on that thumbs up and that way YouTube knows that you like it and they'll pass it along to other people that might enjoy my content as well. I really appreciate it. Thank you again. Let's get started. So we're gonna kinda of jump into it here and I'm going to go over to my home assistant and I don't have any devices or integrations really set up yet so we need to get that set up. I do have Frigate set up already uh, and that's for another video that you'll see soon but I do want to get it set up as well with some other devices um, so I'll get a, a bulb uh, installed and I'll get a button uh, a set up with it as well. Alright so we've set up the Shelly button one and I'm gonna go in and set up my Shelly bulb and you can see I have a bunch of Shelly bulbs here and the best way to do it is using this little hex identifier here at the end of the name of the bulb. So in my uh, <coughs> router, my Eero router, I can go in and set a reserved address and I do that for each one so that the address doesn't change over time and break something within Home Assistant. So you want to have static addresses, of course. But the, the thing to do is look for this number. So when you're in your routing uh, system, you should be able to see the actual name of the bulb and the name of this number because each one has its own little Wi-Fi connector that it uses. So I'm looking for a specific one, so I'm going to go up here to the search. I'm going to type in D16 uh, and then F. So here's the one that I want right here. So I'm going to hit configure. It's going to pop up and say, do you want to keep it with this IP address? And I've already reserved that IP, so yes, I do. And I'm going to say um, submit. And I'll tell it that it's in my office here as far as the area. And finish. And now I should have my device is set up and if I go back to configuration um, and integrations I should be able to see two Shelly devices that are set actually so I do I have the button and I have the bulb so we can go in here and we can just click on first we can just click on our button here and we can basically rename it so let's do that we'll just call this button test one and hit OK. And then if we click on the device itself and we go into the device, you'll see it has this big long ugly name. Let's just hit this uh, edit button and we'll call this button underscore test underscore one. And then we're going to hit uh, save here or the update button. It's going to ask, do we want to update all of the entities? And we do. So we'll let it do that. And you see here it updated the name to match, which is great. That makes it a lot easier for us to find. It identifies that it runs on a battery and it tells us the battery state. So we've got a little bit of information here about it, which is great. We're going to go back to our configuration and integrations. And we're going to go down and find our Shelly bulb now. So we're just going to click on the bulb. And the same thing, we're going to rename this. So we're just going to click on the three dots and rename it as Shelly Bulb Office 1. And we'll click on OK. And then we're going to click on the device. And again, click here. And we're just going to edit the name of it. 
So again, Shelly underscore bulb underscore office underscore one. And I find if you only use underscores, no spaces, and no dashes, then when you do the update, it asks you this, and you can update that that information all at once. You don't have to go do it in several different places, which really helps when you're trying to identify things. So we've got two items identified in our integrations, which is great. Now we can go down to our automations, and I'm going to go in and create an automation. So I'm just going to click on uh, start here, and I'm going to just tell it don't don't give it any name. I'm going to call this uh, light on with button. Pretty easy, and we're just going to use the basic Shelly button integration um, and the Shelly light integration. I'm not going to set up all the MQTT stuff for the button right now, but uh, right you know I can, and that makes it a lot more reliable. But I've I've done videos on that already, so. We're going to go down and we're going to say device is our trigger and we want that device to be our button. So we're going to pick button test one. And we're going to go down and pick button single clicked right here. And the conditions, we can set conditions if we want to, but we don't have to. But when you're setting conditions, it could be the time of day, it could be just anything that you do. Normally when you're clicking a button, you want it to do whatever you click the button for, but, but just be aware, you have conditions that you can set that, that you can say, you know, if it's, if it's between 5 p.m. in the evening and 8 a.m. in the morning, so nighttime basically, don't turn the light on. Uh, those kind of things, right? So you can check to see if the light should be on or not first, and then don't turn it on if you click the button. But again, when you click a button, you generally want what you're, what you're setting up to happen. So now we're going to say device again, and we're going to say the bulb. And we're just going to pick it here, and then it should give us a state automatically. And it, it always goes to off first because it's alphabetical, so F becomes comes before N, so OF becomes be <laughs> OF comes before ON. So we'll just click on it and select turn on the bulb. But again, you can set brightness if you want to. I don't know that it's necessary, but let's just say we want it 75% uh, bright. And then we'll do save. I'm gonna get my camera set up and then we will practice pushing the button and see if the bulb turns on the way we expect. All right, I've got my bulb set up, so I'm just gonna click it on here. You can see it turns on full brightness. We can turn it down. You know partial brightness here and it will go down we can move it back up a little bit uh, just to bring it back up and of course we can turn it back off so I'm just doing that with the mouse on on the screen but now I'm going to use my my actual button that's plugged in um, I know you can't see it but I've got it just plugged into power so it's constantly got uh, power and connection to the Wi-Fi I'm just going to click the button and it should turn on and I set it to go to 75 percent as you recall so let's make sure that that happens and there it goes. It turns on, and here on the screen you can see that the brightness indicator is set to 75%. So my automation is working. So that's really how automations function. It's give me some kind of trigger that tells me I need to do something. Let me know if there's any conditions that I need to set in order to do that thing. And then tell me what action to take when the trigger is, is when, when I see the trigger and when the conditions are met. So automations are really very straightforward, um, and setting them up is really not super tricky, as uh, is not overly difficult either. So we have our first automation set. Of course, if you don't want that automation to function anymore, you can just click this button. If you want it to continue functioning, turn it back on. If you need to get rid of an automation, you need to go into the edit mode of the automation, and then up here in the upper right corner, you can delete the automation if you want to. So I'm not going to delete it yet. I think that automation works just fine, so we'll keep it. When you want to go back to automations, you can click here at the top to get to the list, and you can click Add a New Automation. So we can turn the light on, but if I click the button again, it doesn't really give me any signal that something's been done. So let me go, and I'll show you here on the screen uh, inside of this. So let's say that I've turned my light down, and I want it here at 30%, so it's just dim. If I click the button, it will move it back to 75% because that's what the automation says to do, but it won't turn it off. So I actually want to turn the, the light back off now. So if I click it, I want it to turn on. If I click it again, I want it to turn off. Um, so you can do a couple of things, and we'll talk about that. So let's go to the automations. So we'll go back into our automations, and we're just going to add a new automation for now. Again, we'll just skip that part, and we'll call this turn light off on button. 
All right, so we've got turn light off on button. We're going to go down to the trigger. So the we're going to use this as a device again, but you have a lot of options here when you look at triggers. You have events, you have states. So if you want to look at the state of something, so maybe when I'm home versus when I'm not home. So you have all these different entities that you could also take advantage of as far as checking their state. And understanding their states, you'd want to check out your developer tools and go look at what those states options are. You can do geolocation. So again, if I'm if I change from home to something else, um, you can do that as well. You have a numeric state. So this would be something like the temperature in on a on a certain sensor goes below a certain number or above a certain number. So numeric state is really useful if you're trying to do something like with temperatures or measurements of some kind. You have the position of the sun. So you could set sunrise or sunset. It's going to do something specific. You have a certain time. So at a certain time, you want something to happen. You have a time pattern. So this is a little different. So every so many hours at this minute or at this hour, at so many minutes, at so many seconds. And understanding their time patterns is a little bit tricky. So definitely you'd want to check out the documentation on that. We can come back and do something with that um, later. If you guys want to see that, let me know and I'll do one. If you know how to do web hooks, you can also set up a web hook by zone, of course. You can also set something up to go by zone. So that's really all the options that you have. Um, there's quite a few there, but we're going to go back to device. And again, we're going to say our button. And in this case, we want to say that the button is double clicked. So now if I double click the button, again, I want an action to happen to a device. And that device is my bulb. And I want the bulb to turn off, which is already set, so I can just hit save. So we're already recording. We'll just go back to our dashboard here. And now if I double click, it turns off the light. And if I click, it turns on the light back to 75%. So very easily I've set up a couple of automations that will let me do things and make sense. So I can always say if I know the light is on, I can turn it off. If I know the light is off, I can turn it on. But let's say that I just want to click the button and if it's on, I want it to turn off. And if it's off, I want it to turn on. All right, so we've got our title in here for our automation and we're going to move down and add a uh, trigger. So we're just going to say device and we're going to say our button one and we want that to be a single click. And we're going to move down to our actions. We're going to add an action and on that device, we're going to say bulb and then we want this to toggle the bulb. So if you look here, you have the toggle option for this bulb, which means if it's off, turn it on. If it's on, turn it off. We're going to save that. We're going to go back over to where we have our bulb set and you'll see that it's off. I will turn it on real quick so you can see that it goes back on. Turn it off real quick and it goes back off. And now I'm going to click the button and it turns on and I'll click the button again and it turns off. Now we could set double click to do other things like change the brightness or we could set double click to do something else who knows what but that's pretty awesome that we can set up these automations and do these things in this way i hope this helped you understand how automations work if you're interested in more in-depth automations let me know and i can do another video about it just let me know in the comments or reach out on discuss.opensourceisawesome.com before we finish up, I want to mention, don't forget about the contest. If you're interested in winning some Shelly bulbs and a button like this, a Raspberry Pi 4, 2 gigabyte, the SD card, the HDMI to micro HDMI cable connector, some heat sinks, then get over to discuss.opensourceisawesome.com and sign up and join the channel. I want it. And let me know what voltage your country runs at, 120 volt or 240 volt. That's how you're going to win. Hope you enjoyed this. If you did, like, subscribe. Tell your friends about it so they can come along on the journey with us, and I'll talk to you next time.